Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dev Diary, where we're continuing to work on our Phasmophobia Cross Minute mashup. Now, last time we added interactive environmental objects, tweaked the existing code, and began adding restrictions to match evidence to their proper ghost types. All of this was an attempt to ready us for the final last stretches of this long and ambitious little project. An ambition that continues with today's plan. We'll be adding a few final bits, like picture evidence for the camera. We'll also add controls for room lights, which we added last episode. And finally, we'll make any last minute tweaks and or changes to the code to ready us for what could be the final episode in this series. Sounds like a plan, so let's not waste any more time and get to the coding. Photographic evidence was up first, which required some new sprites of Polaroids featuring things that can be photographed. Then the index checks made in the vision cone object were copied over to the HUD code. Each case would then define which image index is used in the draw event for the photographic evidence results. And surprisingly, this did not work. Now, as mentioned, the last episode, ghost checks were added to a lot of the evidence code. And after some time, I realized that those checks inadvertently had the code specifically ignore the player's vision cone. So the player's cone was added to the checks of an already hefty list of conditionals, which fixed the issue completely. Depending on the object, whether it's the bone, voodoo doll, or ghost, the Polaroid sprite would use the corresponding image index. So with that working, it was on to our next challenge, adding light switches. My approach was simple, create a list of doors spawned for each room, then choose one of said doors to spawn the light switch next to. Sounds simple, right? Well, the first run had light spawning in weird places. And so again, a ton of poking around was done to figure out why. I even had the room's list of doors drawn to make sure that nothing was broken. Eventually, I realized that the reason for this was simple. I kept referencing the room ID instead of a door ID. This fixed the spawning to an extent. However, now the lights refuse to spawn at proper distances which led to a bunch of workaround attempts, such as pushing switches out of walls and realignment conditionals. However, none of it worked, and so I tapped out and decided that the top left tile of each room would be the designated light switch location. It means a little less random bang for our buck, but it may work out for the better in the end. The main takeaway was that the spawns now worked and were consistent, which meant we could finally make them actual switches. So, much like with the doors and other interactables, a distance check is made in the player's code. Then the target switch, which would be tied to a room via variable, would toggle the room's lights on and off. This worked like a charm, and room lights could now be turned on and off at will using the little switches found at the top left of each room. So back in the code, one random switch was then chosen to be the designated fuse box. Then the switch toggle code was modified to check for the fuse box version of our light switch. And instead of simply toggling a room's lights, the fuse box would turn all room lights on at the same time. Again, thankfully, this worked just as needed. Controllable lights were now a thing in our little mashup project. And believe it or not, that's all the time I had for this session. The largest problem with this session was coming back to this project after like a month away. So certain things like the ghost checks and just general code behavior took some getting used to. But I think some decisions, like the light switches always being at the top left of a room, actually works for the better. Another reason for the abrupt end to the session was the fact that we're finally there. We're coming to the end of the project, with just the ghost behaviors left to implement. And since it was going to be one heck of a task, I'd figure I'd wait until the next episode to really dive in. I also may have been slightly tilted by the light switch spawning issues, so it felt like the perfect place to call it for this session. I should also mention that I'm aware Phasmophobia received a very notable update recently, and while I'd love to try keeping up, uh, we're gonna stick with what's already been done, just for the sake of you know, maintaining some type of reasonable end goal here. And so with that said, brings us to the end of this episode of the Dev Diary. If you enjoyed today's entry, consider leaving a like. Be sure to also subscribe and hit that bell if you haven't already. And before you go, let me know, what do you think of the progress so far? What are you most excited for as we begin heading towards the conclusion of this ambitious mashup? Leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.